okay so good evening everyone i am shivani rok and i welcome you all for the week 9 tutorial of the course of simulations of communication systems using matlab and like every week's tutorial this week's tutorial also will be divided into two parts the first part will be recap of the week 9 content and uh, second part will be the questions which are related to the week 9 so let's start with the recap of week 9 content so uh, amber do you have a doubt uh, yes ma'am ma'am uh, could you please discuss ma'am week 8 question 1 ma'am now it has been a uh, solution has been released ma'am actually ma'am answer key has been released yeah the subspace based method is correct so the subspace based methods will uh, sub band yeah sub band sub method it is correct answer ma'am last year it was given lampel zev ma'am uh, last year the question wasn't there uh, ma'am i have seen in week 7 i think ma'am the new wait for the discussion or uh, detailed answer keys from the instructor but as far as okay. i understand uh, the correct answer is sub band based okay ma'am yeah because it will take up different <coughs> band frequency bands and encode them separately that is the whole principle of that particular encoding technique i don't know the great, greater details but yeah this is how it works okay Okay, so let's start with the week nine uh, content recap. So we first uh, started with the concept of low pass and band pass signal. So what do we mean by low pass signal? It means that the spectrum of this signal is non-zero, close to the zero frequency. So the spectrum will look something like this. so the spectrum is so this magnitude of x of f is non zero so let's say this is minus w this is w for f belonging to Minus W to W. This is uh, your low pass signal, and then we have another concept that is band pass signals. So this is simply like your low pass and band pass filters. So this has spectrum something like this. so let's say this is the let's say this is the center frequency this is minus fc this is fc plus w this is minus fc sorry plus fc minus w this is minus fc plus w and this is your minus fc minus w and this is also your ma magnitude of x of f so these band pass signals these are non zero for f or magnitude of f belonging to fc minus w to fc plus w so these are your band pass and low pass signals 
Now what we do in communication signals is we basically have a carrier frequency whenever we are transmitting let's say 3.5 gigahertz or when we are having Wi-Fi signals 2.4 gigahertz so like these we have carrier frequency so actually we are transmitting a signal which is of this kind which is having a spectrum like this however this carrier frequency will be a very high frequency and uh, the band around which we are transmitting will be very small so processing at this particular level is different another thing is for different carrier frequency we can't go on designing different circuitry so what we do is we take up this particular signal and try to understand it is its equivalent low pass signal so that thing is known as equivalent low pass representation and this also has another name and this thing is also known as complex baseband representation So what we do is, suppose we have x of t, this is band pass signal, and xl of t be equivalent low pass signal, for this equivalent low pass signal for the signal xt then this xl and xt are related as so this xt can be written as real part of xlt into a power j root pi fc t and one more thing that we should note is this particular xl of t is complex After that, we looked at signal space representation of noise. So why do we need this particular representation? So we are, we are transmitting some signal xt, which has its signal space representation. Let's say summation little n from 1 to capital N, some SL. some SN into Psi N of T where Psi N of T is nth basis and these signals uh, or this basis are orthonormal basis that is the basic assumption that we are taking into consideration so what happens is we receive we are we want to transmit this particular signal so what we receive is yt equal to this signal that we have transmitted along with that an additive white gaussian process so this particular thing gets added so this is your awgn process with some psd let's say n naught this is what we receive at the particular at uh, when we are transmitting xt now we want to figure out the equivalent representation of this particular signal of this particular signal similar to what we have it here so for that what we do we project this signal on each basis that will give me the nth component of this particular y so what we do is we say y of n is integral 0 to t y t into psi n conjugate t so what happens is when we do this 
we get integral 0 to t x t into psi n conjugate t plus integral 0 to t n t psi n conjugate t. Okay, this is what we get. And this thing we write as xn plus nn. Uh, okay, so let's try to avoid this. Let's take w here. Okay, so this wn is the projection of noise or nt sorry wt on nth basis so this is what we have and we can write this yn as summation over uh, all of these n bases so this is how we go for the signal space representation of noise after that two important inequalities were discussed. The first inequality that was discussed was this Quashie-Schwarz inequality. <laughs> so this Quashie-Schwarz inequality says that if I take inner product squared on left hand side, so integral say minus infinity to infinity s1 t into s2 conjugate t dt whole square this is less than or equal to integral minus infinity to infinity magnitude of s1 t square dt into integral minus infinity to infinity magnitude of s2 t square dt with equality if and only if s1 of t is some comp some scalar multiple of s2 conjugate of t this is your cauchy schwartz inequality and another inequality that we looked at was this triangular inequality and this triangular inequality is given by integral minus infinity to infinity magnitude of s1 t plus s2 t square dt is less than or equal to integral minus infinity to infinity magnitude of s1 t square dt plus integral minus infinity to infinity magnitude of s2 t square Okay, so this is what we are having here. So these two inequalities we had discussed. Once we had done this basics, we went on to discuss different kind of modulation schemes. So the first <coughs> modulation scheme that we discussed was this PAM, which is basically your pulse amplitude modulation. And in that, what we do, we transmit this set plus minus 1, plus minus 3, plus minus 5, and so on till plus minus m minus 1. And in lecture, instead of writing m, we wrote this to be equal to 2m in lectures. So basically, if I have this, then I have m possible choices. And for this, we can write SM, so mth choice. Okay, I'll just take it down. Mth choice I can write as SM to be equal to 2m minus m minus 1. 
Okay, so this is the one for your pulse amplitude modulation. After that, and how does this particular modulation scheme look? So this is like a one dimensional modulation scheme. It has one basis. This is your zero. So we can transmit one, three, and so on till m minus one, or we can transmit or we can transmit minus 1, minus 3 and so on till minus of m minus 1. So these points here, these are known as the constellation points and this particular diagram whatever we have drawn here is known as constellation diagram and the mth choice is given by this particular formula here. The next modulation technique that we looked at was PSK. This PSK is known as phase shift keying. And in this particular case, the SM or the mth choice is given by E power J 2 pi M minus 1 by Okay, so this is your constellation, uh, mth choice and this particular constellation looks like, so each and every point of this constellation lies on a circle, lies on a circle of radius 1. So this is e power j0, then we can have point here, 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 here. So all the constellation points of PSK lie on a circle okay and the last constellation that we looked in this particular lecture was this squam and this squam is known as quadrature amplitude modulation this is quadrature amplitude modulation Okay, and this quadrature amplitude modulation, we can visualize it as combination of of pulse amplitude modulation and PSK. So its mth symbol can be 
looked as am into e power j theta m and we have control over both of these things so we change both am and theta m and the general cases of uh, qam are psk and pm when we have am as some constant then that will reduce to your psk and when we have theta m to be constant that will reduce or theta m to be equal to zero that will reduce to pulse amplitude modulation so that's all about the content that was covered in the week 9 if you have any questions then please let me know regarding this week's content uh, excuse me ma'am yes um, ma'am, actually, last year, I, uh, last year's assignment, uh, there was a question that, ma'am, eight PSK uh, can be represented as uh, a two-dimensional uh, signal, ma'am. Ma'am, how is it so? I won't answer that. It's there in the assignment this week. So just to, I haven't checked the uh, week tens. No, it's not every ma'am week, ma'am. Ma'am, it's in the last, ma'am. I think, ma'am, uh, last year, ma'am, not this year, ma'am. Did you check last uh, this year's assignment? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. This was in last, ma'am. It's there in this year's assignment as well. Okay, ma'am. Don't ask me anything that is related to 10th week content. If you have any question for week 9 or before, please ask me. I can see one question which you have posted that a speech signal is sampled at a rate of 20,000 samples per second. A 12 millisecond window is used for short time spectral analysis. How many speech signals are possible? So what do you mean by sampling rate? Hello? Uh, yes, ma'am. What do you mean by sampling rate? Uh, ma'am, sampling rate means ma'am, sampling frequency, ma'am. I think so, ma'am. Uh, do we have? Frequency. What is the physical interpretation or meaning of uh, sampling rate? So, if I say that I'm sampling a signal with some sampling frequency, let's say, for your example, twenty samples per second. What does it mean? Uh, like, ma'am, twenty samples are uh, sampled in every second, ma'am. Exactly. So now, if it says that at each and every second, we are having. 20,000 samples being generated and now you are given a window of 12 milliseconds. So you have given a time duration. Yes, ma'am. So the number of samples, how will you find it? Rate into the time which you are asked to do, right? Yes, so it will be simply 20,000 into the window length. Mm, 240 will be the answer, ma'am. 20,000 mm. into 12 milliseconds, yes. Okay, ma'am. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Correct. Does it answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Any other question? No, ma'am. Okay. So, okay, if there are no further questions, I'll just start with. The questions that I have planned to cover today. So apparently this question is there in uh, this week's tutorial so I won't take it. This week means 10th week's tutorial so I won't take it. So I'll start with question 2. I'll discuss the same question in next week definitely once the next week or next to next week in the 11th week's tutorial once it is done. Okay, so let's start with question two. It says that if X of T is an is a AWGN process, that is projected over an orthonormal space to generate a vector X, then entries of X are dash distributed with dash mean and dash variance. So what we will do is we'll consider simple cases. So we have this X of T as a WGN process and let expectation of 
xt xt plus tau to be equal to n naught by 2 delta tau or to be just consistent with the course let us take it to be n naught delta tau okay so this is what we have another thing since it is an AWGL process we have expectation of x of t to be equal to 0 so these are the things that we know and what do we mean by this uh, projected over an orthonormal space to generate x so if I have x this vector it will have x1 x2 till xn transpose so this is an n dimensional vector and what does this collect so this vector collects the coefficients by which we multiply to each uh, basis signal so we can write this xt as summation n equal to 1 to n xn into psi n of t okay so this is what we can do i don't know what this n is this might be or uh, let us take a very generalized case okay anyway let it let it be like this only so so this we can construct to a sufficient level of approximation something like this there might be some error terms but we are given this n dimensional basis and now uh, the coefficients that best construct these vectors are given by these uh, coefficients and how do we find this coefficients we have seen this for signals so we know that this xn is equal to projection of the signal xt on the nth basis So this is what we have. Now what we need to find is, we, find, we need to find the distribution of x. Now this x can, so this integral can be uh, understood as a large, like as summation also with a very small step size. So this can be written as a linear combination. of Gaussian random variables my screen froze let me just stop sharing and again share yeah now it's better yeah linear combination of Gaussian random variables therefore xn is also Gaussian with some mean mu xn and variance sigma xn square okay so now what we will do we'll take up expectation of xn this is equal to expectation or let's say let's start with mu xn which is equal to expectation of xn which is expectation of integral minus infinity to infinity xt sin dt Then since expectation is a linear operator, we can take it inside the integral minus infinity to infinity, expectation of xt to 
sin conjugate of t so sin conjugate of t is a constant like it is deterministic it is not a random variable or a random process so expectation of xt this particular thing is equal to 0 so the in entire integral reduces to 0 okay so this is what we are having so the what we are having till now is x's are Gaussian distributed with zero mean and now we want to figure out what its variance is. So instead of variance what we will do is we will figure out this quantity that is expectation of xn xn conjugate. So this will be equal to, so I will just write it, this will be equal to sigma xn square when n equal to n. Okay. So this thing comes out to be equal to expectation of integral minus infinity to infinity x of t. sin conjugate of t dt into integral minus infinity to infinity this x of t 1 1 1 this x of t is a real function it is an AWGN process it's real then we have psi m conjugate of t1 dt1 okay this we have now we can just oh, sorry So this we can now write as expectation of integral minus infinity to infinity, integral minus infinity to infinity, x of t1 into x of t2, psi n conjugate of t1, psi n conjugate of t2, dt1, dt2. Then again by linearity property of expectation, I can take the expectation inside. So now I have integral minus infinity to infinity, integral minus infinity to infinity, expectation of x of t1, x of t2, there's going to be a conjugate here, sorry, psi n, psi n conjugate of t1 into psi m t2 dt1 dt2. Now we have taken up or we have defined something the pro, uh, autocorrelation function of the random process x of t which is equal to n0 delta tau and this delta tau is basically the difference between these two time instances. So this quantity here it is equal to n0 delta t2 minus t1 okay so then we get this to be equal to integral minus infinity to infinity integral minus infinity to infinity n naught delta t2 minus t1 psi n conjugate of t1 psi m conjugate of t2 dt1 dt2 so let us take out everything that is a function of t1 outside. So what we get is integral minus infinity to infinity n0 is constant then we have psi n conjugate of t1 then integral minus infinity to infinity psi m t2 into delta t2 minus t1 dt2 into dt1 and by shifting property of uh, impulses this is equal to psi n oh, sorry psi m of t1 so therefore this reduces to n naught integral minus infinity to infinity psi n conjugate t1 psi m 
dt1 and uh, this we have considered to be an orthonormal space so this integral is equal to 1 if n equal to m it is equal to 0 if n is not equal to m so this thing here comes out to be equal to n naught if n equal to m and 0 if n not equal to m so what we get is this variance sigma in xn square comes out to be equal to n naught which is equal to the PST so the variance is n naught another thing that we should note here is these are iid gaussians so the variance n naught is independent of so this is independent of index n which mean xn for all n are Gaussian with 0 mean sigma xn square or in other words n naught and this implies that those are uncorrelated or independent. and they are identically distributed sorry independent is it clear yes ma'am Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, in some questions, ma'am, I have seen, ma'am, they write that uh, it is like one-sided PSD. So, ma'am, uh, in that, uh, does it mean it is n naught or n naught by two, ma'am? Mm, which question you are referring to? Uh, ma'am, actually, I was uh, like uh, in digital communication, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, uh, like for example, if we have to calculate error probability or bit error rate, ma'am, in that questions, ma'am. Huh. So, like, ma'am, one sided PSD, ma'am, it means, ma'am, it is N0, ma'am. Just a minute. Can you show me the question? Oh, uh, just a So basically, it's like uh, if you have one sided PhD and it is given as N0, it means the two sided PhD will have two sided PhD will have a value of N0 by 2. So it's like the bandwidth for same bandwidth if we are having, then accordingly you will have to modify based on whatever bandwidth things are given to you. So if one sided PSD is N0, then it's equivalent two sided PSD will have N0 by 2. That's what I understand. So I think it's basically like this. I don't know if you're referring to the same thing. So uh, you're looking at this particular uh, signal and the noise affected here. And this is of, let's say, bandwidth W. Then if you look and it will have n naught and if you look at it's if, no i don't think this is correct but yeah uh, one side white gaussian noise ma'am uh i mean in white noise ma'am in the case of ma'am white noise ma'am uh ma'am it if it is given like ma'am one-sided psd then uh, ma'am we consider ma'am for positive frequency as n naught if 
uh, for like we are considering both positive and negative frequencies then it is called ma'am i think two sided frequency then it is n not by 2 for all the frequencies ma'am uh, i think i think so ma'am डिशनल Yeah, at the end of the session, we'll discuss them. It's fine to discuss, but let me first finish off whatever is needed for this week, because I need to take care of other people also. Because okay, ma'am. On YouTube and they'll see those things. Okay, ma'am. Okay. We can use M array pulse amplitude modulation to represent how many bits. So this is apparently a simple question. So what do we mean by M array PAM? It says that we have M choices of constellation point. and what we have so suppose we have such system we have bits coming up and then these bits are grouped in group of k so what it will do is it will group them like like this so these are k length groups and after that you choose xm or choose a constellation point So now, if I have a k length group coming into this, so I have k bits, and these k bits will have two to the power k distinct possibilities. And these two to the power k distinct possibilities. we need to assign unique constellation point to each distinct k length binary sequence okay so if you have so you have 2 to the power k distinct possibilities
you need to map each of them to a unique constellation point therefore your m should be equal to 2 to the power k and therefore your k will be equal to log m to the base 2 so this is the answer Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So let's start with the next question. So next question says that write a MATLAB program to generate 10,000 samples uh, or 10,000 random symbols from the given constellation. So this is the given constellation that we are having. And from that we need to generate uh, 10,000 samples. So for that let me just share my screen okay i hope the screen is visible week 9 we start with standard way generally all your programs should start with this so what is asked to us is we want to generate 10,000 symbols or random symbols from the constellation A as minus 3, minus 1, 1 and 3. Okay, so this is what is given to us. This is what we need to do. So let's do this. We have n as 10,000. So these are number of random symbols. Then we have the constellation A as minus 3, 
minus 1, 1 and 3. Constellation. Then we have M, which is 10th of A. So this gives number of points in the constellation. Let's write it this way. And then what we need to do is, so we want to randomly select from this particular set. This is not an in, like a index set kind of thing. So this has negative values also. So MATLAB 1 and 3 can be indices, but not minus 3 and minus 1. So this is some uh, uh, vector that is given to us and from this vector we want to select any of its entry randomly. So we have seen this how to do in our earlier classes. So what we do is we first gen randomly generate uh, indices or we generate random indices and how do we do, do that? So we do it by the command rand i. How many possibilities do we have? We have m options. And how many values do we need to generate? We want to generate n. So this will give me n cross 1 dimensional vector. So let us run this first. Yeah. So now if you see, it is a uh, <coughs> n dimension. So it is 10,000 cross 1 dimensional vector of indices uh, or of each entry from either 1, 2, 3 or 4. So from 1 to 4 it is uniformly generating uh, indices and uh, how much length? 10,000. And now what we will do? We will take the constellation points as A of this index. So what we have done here is get random indices and here what do we do get the constellation points or get the points in A and when we do that we get this vector S which will have minus 3, 3, minus 1, minus 1 so points from this particular thing okay so let us try to plot histogram of this so we can right click and do histogram so i think you won't be able to see this let me share my entire screen only So this is the histogram. So if we see minus 3, minus 1, 1 and 3. So this is what we are having. <coughs> so we had uh, 10,000 values and minus 3, minus 1, 1 and 3 all are generated approximately 2500 times. That is uniformly. So this is what we are having. Another thing that we can do is I will just... I'll also plot this indices histogram. This is for what we have, and this is the histogram for the indices. So this is how it will look. So this is a simple code to get constellation points at random.
Oke. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So just a minute, I'll stop sharing this MATLAB and start sharing my So this was the code that we wrote. I just copy pasted it for future reference. Okay. So if there are no questions in this, we'll take up the next question. So it says that for the constellation A, <coughs> which is given something like this, same constellation that we had in the previous one. What it says is we need to find the average energy assuming symbol, uh, equiprobable symbols. So what it says is the symbols are equiprobable. This means that probability of minus 3 equal to probability of minus 1 equal to probability of 1 equal to probability of 3 which comes out to be equal to 1 by 4 okay so this is what we are having here now it says uh, says that find the average energy assuming equiprobable symbols this is given to us now in general the average energy let's write it in this way e average is given as summation m equal to 1 to n sorry not m, m. probability that or let's say we have energy of mh symbol multiplied by probability that that symbol occurs so this is equal to energy of Sn, where Sn is mth symbol in some given constellation. And this is probability of Sn. Okay, so using this formula, for our case, this E average will be equal to the first constellation point and what will be this E of Sn? In general, this will be equal to magnitude of Sn square in general. Okay. So now what will happen is for our case, E average will be equal to magnitude of minus 3 square multiplied by its probability plus magnitude of minus 1 square multiplied by its probability plus magnitude of 1 square plus its probability uh, sorry into its probability plus magnitude of 3 square 
into its probability. So this comes out to be equal to 9 plus 1 plus 1 plus 9 whole divided by 4. I can take out 1 by 4 common. So 9 plus 1 is 10. So this comes out to be equal to 20 by 4 which comes out to be equal to 5. So this is the average energy for the given constellation. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Now the next question is, uh, let's move on to the next question now. So this is the sixth question. So this says that consider two signals x1t and x2t with n dimensional basis representation with coefficient stacked in x1 and x2. So what we will do is, so we'll take psi n of t n equal to 1 to capital N set of let us take up orthonormal basis then this x1 vector is x11 x12 and so on till x1 capital N transpose. This x2 vector is x21, x22 and so on till x2n transpose. And this x1 and x2 have this orthogonal orthonormal basis representation with coefficient stacked in x1 vector and x2 vector. What it means is we can write x1 of t as summation n equal to 1 to capital N x1 n into psi n of t and in similar fashion we can write x2 of t which is equal to summation n equal to 1 to n x2 n psi n t so this is the n-dimensional representation and now what we need to find is we need to find the interpretation or we need to find the value of this inner product that is inner product between x1 t uh, minus x2 t with itself. So for that what we will do let's say if this is x3 t or some x t. Okay. So what we have is we have x t as x1 t minus x2 t and we want in a product of x t with itself okay so let's first try to understand what this x t is so this we can write as n equal to 1 to n from this representation that we are having here x1 n psi n of t minus summation n equal to 1 to n x2 n psi n of t we can merge these two summations and take out psi n of t common so then we can write it as summation n equal to 1 to n x1 n minus x2 n psi n of t and just for the simplicity let's write this as x n so therefore this is equal to summation n equal to 1 to n xn into psi n t where xn is defined as x1 n minus x2 n. Okay. This we have here. 
now let us find out the inner product so we want to find out this so we can write this as integral minus infinity to infinity x of t into x conjugate of t dt this we can write as integral minus infinity to infinity first one as n equal to 1 to n xn psi n t multiplied by summation m equal to 1 to n xm conjugate psi m conjugate of t dt. I have just substituted the definition of xt and x conjugate of t. Okay, so now what we can do is we can simplify it a little bit so this will be equal to integral minus infinity to infinity summation n equal to 1 to capital n summation m equal to 1 to capital n xn xm conjugate psi n of t psi m conjugate of t dt so this we can what we can do is we can take this we can interchange these summations and integrals so what we will get is summation n equal to 1 to n summation m equal to 1 to n then we have xn into xm conjugate so these two are constants these are not a function of time so then we'll have integral minus infinity to infinity psi n of t into psi m conjugate of t dt now we have taken them to be orthogonal basis so this integral will be equal to 1 if n equal to m and it will be equal to 0 if n not equal to n so what we will do is we will split these two in two summations so we can write them as summation n equal to 1 to n magnitude of xn square into integral minus infinity to infinity magnitude of psi n t square dt plus summation n equal to 1 to n summation m equal to 1 to n m not equal to n xn xm conjugate into integral minus infinity to infinity psi n of t psi m conjugate of t dt so therefore what we get is this thing here is equal to 1 and this integral here comes out to be equal to 0 because of this definition. Okay, so what we get now is only the first summation survives which is summation n equal to 1 to n magnitude of xn square. But what was xn? We had defined xn to be equal to x1n minus x2n. So therefore this is equal to summation n equal to 1 to n x1n minus x2n square and what does it mean it means that or in other words this is basically equal to l2 norm square of x1 and x2 so this interpretation implies l2 norm of vectors x1 minus x2 and this also implies so this particular thing this particular thing is basically equal to your euclidean distance between two n dimensional vectors x1 and x2 so what happened here is we started with inner product of x1 t minus x2 t with itself and that led to inner product so this we can also write as this is also like inner product 
of the vectors x1 minus x2 and this inner product x comma y is basically defined as y Hermitian x. Same thing. So one kind of inner product is with the change of basis is getting converted to another kind of inner product. So this is like a minimum, uh, this is like a Euclidean distance. So this is basically the Euclidean distance or this is basically your Euclidean norm or your L2 norm of uh, the vector x1 minus x2. Is it clear? So now what happens is sometimes you want to figure out uh, how different or what is the difference or energy of the difference between two signals. So instead of working with this time domain and going for solving these kind of integrals, then we have orthogonal representation. It's better to just find uh, its vector, its uh, basis coefficients and just find the Euclidean distance between those two. So this is a simple thing that we can do and generally we do this kind of thing in digital communication. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the next question then. So the next question says that we need to find the low pass equivalent of the following signals. So uh, in the earlier uh, discussion also we have discussed this. So what we wrote is, let's say this SMT is band pass signal. and SML of T be its equivalent low pass signal. Okay. Then we can write SMT to be equal to summation, sorry, Sorry, extremely sorry. Real part of SML T into e power j 2 pi f c. Okay. So this is the relation between these two signals. And now what we are asked is we need to figure out the low pass equivalent of the given signals SMT and SM, uh, both of them. So the first signal we know that it is a PSK signal. And the second one is simple or PAM signal. Okay, so let's start with the first one. So the first one is SMT is cos of 2 pi FCT plus 2 pi m minus 1 by capital M. Now for uh, solving this what we will do is we will try to use this thing. So if I have so what we can do is if I have something like this e power j theta we can write it as cos theta plus j sin theta. Okay so therefore we can write cos theta to be equal to real part of e power j theta and sin theta to be equal to imaginary part of e power j theta. Okay, so now here we have a cos. So therefore we can write this SMT to be equal to real part of e power j and whatever theta. So if we compare this with this, what is the theta that we have? It is 2 pi fct plus this quantity. So this thing will be equal to uh, and uh, let us say we have some pulse shaping also here. Let's have this pulse shaping. Okay. 
JT, JT in both the cases. Let's have this pulse shaping also. And this pulse shaping is real quantity. So e power 2 pi FCT plus 2 pi M minus 1 by M into GT. This GT is a real function, so it can just go inside. It's fine. Not what we'll do, we'll rearrange it. So we can write it as e pa uh, real part of GT. Then we can just separate out this part. So that will be equal to e power j 2 pi m minus 1 by m multiplied by this part e power j 2 pi fc t. Now try to compare this thing, compare this thing with this thing. So if we c t. Okay. So if we do that, then this thing here is basically our SML of T. So therefore, SML of T comes out to be equal to GT into e power j 2 pi m minus 1 by m. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. That is clear, then let me move on to the second part of the same question. Okay. So for this, my SMT was equal to AM cos 2 pi FCT into GM. I'm sorry, GT. Or let me just put this thing. Where GT is again same function, it is a, a real valued function. So again, I can write this as AM into GT into real part of E power J 2 pi FCT. These two are real, so we can just take it inside. So this is equal to real part of AM GT into E power J. 2 pi FCT. Again, if we compare it, so this is equal to real part of SMLT, that is equivalent low pass into e power j 2 pi FCT. So then this part here and this part here is same. So therefore, it's equivalent low pass. This is equal to AM into GT. Simple. So this is for the second part, which is my pulse amplitude modulation. And this was for the first part, which was my PSK, that is phase shift gain. Is it clear? Any questions till this point? No, oh, ma'am. If there are no questions, then let's move on to the eighth question. Okay, so this question says that let D be the minimum distance 
so let d be the minimum distance between two points of the 8 phk constellation if each symbol is of unit energy find the value of d okay so what is given to us is something like this So we have a PSK constellation. Then we are given eight PSK. So this lies on circle something like this and what is given to us is the minimum distance between any two constellation points so the minimum distance between two constellation points is d so the minimum distance will be the distance between two nearest points so if i consider this as reference this point and this point are nearest so the distance between these two points is given to be equal to d so what we are given is So this distance, this distance is given to be D. Okay, this is the information we have now. And another thing given to us is each symbol is of unit energy. We have seen that the energy of a symbol is magnitude SM square. And for each of them, this distance or the radius this radius is equal to under root e and since it is unit this is equal to 1 so the radius is of 1 this is also of 1 okay now these are 8 constellation points and each are equispaced which means that these eight constellation points if I draw lines like this then these lines will divide this 2 pi angle into eight parts so this angle whatever we have here is equal to 2 pi by m and here m is equal to 8 so this comes out to be equal to pi by 4 okay so now we have this triangle here something like this like this and here this side is D so this is 1 and this is also 1 and this angle is this angle is pi by 4 now what we'll do, we'll just drop, we want to figure out what is the value of D. We don't know this D. So what we'll do, we'll just drop a perpendicular here. Since it is an isosceles triangle, this angle and this angle both will be of pi by 8. And this will be of D by 2. So now if I take sine pi by 8. That will be equal to opposite side, which is d by 2, divided by the hypotenuse length, which is equal to 1. So, therefore, this d comes out to be equal to 2 times sine of pi by 8. And if we solve this in our calculators, this comes out to be equal to 0 0.7654. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay.
okay so just a minute if there are no questions in this part we can move on to the next question okay so this question says consider the following two constellations first constellation is this four psk which is having these four points that is under root 2 j times root 2 minus root 2 and minus j times root 2 and then we have four uh, pam that is minus 3 minus 1 1 and 3 so it said that if all the points occur with equal probability, find the ratio of the average energy of 4 PAM to 4 BSK. Okay, so these two constellations are given. So let's say that this has an energy EPSK and this has an average energy. And uh, this has an average energy of, let's say, EPAM. And what is given to us is all of these points occur with equal probability. So these, so this 1 by 2, J root 2, minus root 2, and so different, like, at a time I'll only use one of the constellations. So in this particular constellation, root 2, J root 2, minus root 2, and minus J root 2, each of them occur with probability 1 by 4. Similarly, for this pulse amplitude modulation, minus 3 occurs with probability 1 by 4, minus 1 with 1 by 4, 1 with probability 1 by 4, and 3 also, and also 3 with probability 1 by 4. Okay. So this is what we have. So therefore, let us first find out what is EPSK. And what we need to find out is we want EPM to EPSK. Okay. So let us first figure out what is this EPAM. So this we had uh, earlier seen, but still let's for the sake of completeness let us see it again so this is epam is minus 3 square into 1 by 4 plus minus 1 square into 1 by 4 plus 1 square into 1 by 4 plus minus sorry plus 3 square into 1 by 4 and we have seen that this comes out to be equal to 5 and now we can find out this EPSK. So this is root 2 with probability 1 by 4. So that will be equal to root 2 square into 1 by 4. Plus magnitude of J root 2 square into 1 by 4. Plus minus root 2 square into 1 by 4 plus minus j into root 2 square into 1 by 4. So this is equal to, I can take out 1 by 4 common, it is 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 and this comes out to be equal to So therefore, EPM divided by EPSK comes out to be equal to 5 by 2 which is equal to 2.5 is it okay yes ma'am So if that is clear, just quickly move on to the last question for today. So this question says that, repeat the previous question, if the points occur with probability, 
uh, with this given set of probabilities. Okay, so we are having two constellations. First one was 4 PSK. So this had root 2, comma j root 2. Then we had minus root 2 into and minus j root 2. And now it is said that these take these probabilities, given set of probabilities with one to one correspondence. So this occurs with probability half. This occurs with probability 1 by 6. This occurs with probability 1 by 6. And this occurs with probability 1 by 6. Similarly, we have this 4 fam. This was minus 3, minus 1, 1 and 3. So now this minus 3 occurs with probability half. This occurs with probability 1 by 6. This occurs with probability 1 by 6 and this occurs with probability 1 by 6. Okay, so we have this thing now. Okay. So now let us figure out what is the energy for this for uh, PSK. So what I'll do, I'll just copy paste this on next page. So now let us figure out the energy for this thing. So therefore, EPSK will be equal to magnitude of root 2 square into its probability that is 1 by 2 plus magnitude of J into root 2 square into its probability 1 by 6 plus magnitude of minus root 2 square into its probability 1 by 6 plus magnitude of minus J root 2 2 into probability 1 by 6. So magnitude of root 2 is 2 into 1 by 2 plus 2 into 1 by 6 plus 2 into 1 by 6 plus 2 into 1 by 6. I can take out 2 common then that is 1 by 2 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 which is which so this is sum of all the probabilities so that is equal to 1 so this comes out to be equal to 2 so the uh, energy of or the average energy for the PSK constellation whatever we have is again 2 even for these probabilities for, so therefore for any set of probabilities the average energy for PSK won't get affected okay now let us move on to the PAM signal So for this PAM signal, this E PAM will be equal to minus 3 square into half plus minus 1 square into its probability that is 1 by 6 plus 1 square into its probability 1 by 6 plus 3 square into its probability 1 by 6. So therefore, this comes out to be equal to 9 into half plus 1 into 1 by 6 plus 1 into 1 by 6 plus 9 in upon 6. So if we solve this, this comes out to be equal to 38 by 6. And if we simplify this, this comes out to be equal to 19 by 3. which is almost equal to 6.3333. So therefore, or let us keep it like this for now. And therefore, what we wanted to find out was EPAM by EPSK. EPAM by EPSK is equal to EPAM is 19 by 3 and EPSK is 2. 
So this comes out to be equal to 19 by 6. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So this was the last question that I wanted to cover today. If you have any other questions, then please let me know. Ma'am, I have some uh, little inquiry related to PAM and PSK. Okay. And what is the fundamental difference between PAM and PSK? It can be and both are equal for some cases. Okay. So the basic difference between PAM and PSK. So this PAM is you. So, for this pulse amplitude modulation, what you do is you make changes okay. in amplitude only. Okay. So, it's like you are, you are here and then you make changes something like this. So now when I'm moving it on a single line, there is no concept of phase. So when I'm having a pulse amplitude modulation, I'm varying only a magnitude part and this is, so in this case, my phase is zero or my phase is constant. So I'm just making changes along the amplitude. However, when I'm having phase shifting, so in name only we are having a phase, phase shift key. So we modify phases. So its mth symbol is given by e power j 2 pi m minus 1 by m. Okay. Okay. So now but, we, uh, one second, yes. let me complete. So when we do it, this amplitude is constant. Something like this we will do. And then these points will lie on this circle. And this angle will be 2 pi m minus 1 by m. And this radius will be equal to 1 or whatever energy you are transmitting. So in this situation, what is happening? We are modifying the phase and amplitude is constant. Now the uh, confusion that is arising to you is the case when m equal to 2 for both PAM and PSK. Am I right? Yes, yes, yes. Huh. So now what happens is when I am having PAM, It will be 1 and minus 1 for m equal to 2. And when I'm having PSK, what I'll have is something like this. Okay, so by just looks of it, it looks very similar. When I'm transmitting, I'm transmitting the same thing. So a small fundamental difference between these two is the way the PAM and PSK or the dimensions that this PAM and PSK use. So if you look at this pulse amplitude modulation, so for PAM, the signal that you transmit, let's say SMT, is real part of E power or it is something like this am into cos 2 pi fct okay into some constant or some pulse shaping let's say okay so this is your basis this is your basis only one basis is required to represent your pulse amplitude modulation 
now when i okay. go with psk in general i am seeing that this is the only difference that is coming up for psk this smt is basically equal to real part of e power j 2 pi fct into e power j 2 pi m minus 1 by m okay so now what we can do is we can write this as real part of cos 2 pi fct plus j times sin 2 pi fct some constant multiplication will be there that will norm normalize the basis into cos 2 pi m minus 1 by m i think this will be covered in the 10th week but still let's do it m minus 1 by m okay and now if i simplify it the real part of this signal will be equal to cos 2 pi m minus 1 by m into cos 2 pi fct minus or it's a plus sin 2 pi m minus 1 by m multiplied by minus sin 2 pi fct correct this is okay yes ma'am now if you apply gram schmidt orthogonalization and try to simplify it you will understand that this cos 2 pi fct so this cos 2 pi fct and sin 2 pi fct are orthogonal functions like and you can mm. then normalize it properly to simplify it so these are basically addition of uh, two weighted um, orthogonal signals so you need two orthogonal signals to represent this particular signal this cos 2 pi fct and sin 2 pi fct are two bases that you need two basis signals so this is your psi 1 of t and psi 2 of t so now you need two bases so that's why i have drawn here psi 1 of t and psi 2 of t for psk in principle when you are practically transmitting you are transmitting the same thing however fundamentally when you are talking about pulse amplitude modulation it requires only one basis to represent it however when you are talking mm. about psk phase shift uh, mod, uh, phase shifting you need require two bases so okay. when you are implementing your psk you will be implementing it with the structure of a psk but you will be imposing m equal to 2 in that situation this sign uh, component whatever we are having will be zero so basically you will be transmitting something like 1,0 and minus 1,0 so these are the coefficients that you will be transmitting for your mpsk however for your pam signal you will be transmitting 1 or minus 1 1 Okay. Okay. Does it make sense to you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. I think this will be discussed in the tenth week because just by looking okay. at the assignment, this concept should be there. I don't know if it is not there. I'll discuss in detail in coming week. But I think this suffices. Okay, ma'am. Okay, um, that's why I'm confused. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, ma'am. Yeah. Anything else? If you have any questions, then please let me know. Otherwise, you are free to. leave the meeting and yeah you had some other other question just post it in the group i'll check verify and let you know ambar you post it in the portal uh, what i remember vaguely is uh, i'm getting confused with we need to take n not or n not by 2 that i'll check properly but what i understand is when you are saying about uh, double sided uh, psd it means you are specifying the psd for both negative frequencies and positive frequencies however when you are having a real random process yes ma'am then in that situation what happens is the real and the imagine uh, sorry the positive and negative frequencies have a similar um, structure so those are symmetric so in that situation yes. what happens is it is okay to just provide the uh, spectrum for the positive frequencies and scale it appropriately so that you take care of both the sides so that is just yes, for the sake of representation however the exact thing what you want just post it in the portal because if i answer it orally and you ask me something else i might flip where to use n not by 2 where to use n not and it will be a mess okay so just be let's try to be very clear post it in the portal i'll uh, answer you 
and uh, ma'am uh, like for the ma'am final exam ma'am uh, ma'am ma'am final exam ma'am apart from the uh, the pr- problem solving session lectures and assignments what else can we do ma'am i think it should be more than sufficient okay ma'am i don't think you will be asked too detailed questions on um, uh, digital communication also whatever concepts are covered in the lectures it it should be more than sufficient i think Suppose some questions like ma'am, uh, in past weeks, ma'am, they had uh, like come uh, which were not covered in ma'am lectures, ma'am, and uh, like ma'am last year, ma'am students told that it was that paper was not uh, that scoring. I mean, compared to other subjects, ma'am, like like NPTEL, ma'am. Uh, so uh, that why I, I was asking that's why because like this uh, my score will be like considered for grading also in my uh, like semester exam actually. Okay. So. Uh, I have no I, I haven't seen last year's question I am doing TA for this course for the first time so uh, what we can do is uh, ma'am like uh, can you like provide some additional like practice question like ma'am uh, uh, ma'am uh, if possible ma'am uh, after ma'am 12 12th week ma'am actually I am a PhD student and I have too much deadlines and it's really difficult for me to yeah. find the questions but uh, uh, I'll see if I get no, anything no. any resources I'll post it so ideally what I try to do in my sessions is I try to cover last year's assignment and some additional conceptual questions that might help you yes ma'am so because especially this assignment there was nothing from last year's assignment it's exact copy paste so I can't okay. solve only one question was different, which they put it in another assignment. So yes, ma'am. Yeah. So I'm trying to give you additional resources to build your yes. concept. Yes, ma'am. So I think this should be sufficient. You can okay. also refer to the other tutorial session. They might she might also be covering more questions. I haven't talked to her. Uh, I'm actually, I think, uh, ma'am Anu Agarwal, I think, but ma'am, she's uh, she's actually uh, uh, co- focusing more on, I think, coding part. And uh, Dylan, last, I think, she's discussing last year assignments. I've have, uh, have seen her, her videos. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, I haven't seen last year's questions. So what we can do is, after, if I get the last year's question paper, uh, what we can do is this after 12 weeks i need to yes. take an additional summary session for npt you people okay ma'am so that summary session we can take up for uh, solving questions yes ma'am and or solving your doubts so for that what you can do is after the 11th week's tutorial is done yes ma'am you just make a list of questions that you want me to solve okay ma'am like in this in that particular two hour session in the portal so i take up those questions if the questions list is too big like last time last semester whenever when i taught uh, some another question when i was ta was uh, for some another course those people sent me like 20 25 questions which was not possible to solve in two hours slot it was a lengthy question kind of course yes so in that situation what i'll do i'll provide you hints Yes, I will provide you an outline for the solution and yes. then you can work on it. And again, if you don't understand, put it in the portal, I'll answer. Uh, ma'am, is it possible for you, ma'am, uh, that uh, the exam which happened f- in final, uh, not not internal, ma'am, that external one, could you like uh, put its paper, ma'am, like questions, ma'am, if if, if it gets, na, I, we can ma'am, uh, pull, uh, put in, ma'am, on the portal which question we want to discuss, ma'am. No, no, or, I don't have access to any of the assignments, nothing. No, not ma'am assignments, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, last year what uh, may had happened in uh, like in computer based test that one, ma'am. Uh, whatever resources I have is uh, the one which was available on NPTEL portal, and those questions are generally not available. Okay, ma'am. So the computer based test, whatever happens, those questions are not uploaded on the NPTEL portal. So I also don't ha- have access to it. Okay, ma'am. So if someone has taken that course in your college and they vaguely remember those questions then you can just take them try to solve if you don't understand put it in the portal so don't try start putting the, the doubts right now for the summary session 
yes, to them after 11th week's tutorial. You mentioned my name for Shivani Dhok uh, tutorial session. Uh, okay, ma'am. Session like that, so that Anu won't get involved in <laughs> these things also. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Ma'am, could you please suggest some ma'am uh, books like ma'am uh, if like uh, for uh, practice problems for these type of questions, ma'am? What I have seen uh, is that he is just giving uh, the professor is just giving basic questions which are related to. Digital communication and those things. So you may look at the MCQs which are available for digital communication online. Okay, ma'am. And what are the whatever questions he gave in this particular uh, all the weeks were like uh, were not too many numerical based questions. Those were like information only. Whatever content was covered, just MCQs related to that. Not yes, ma'am. Not even solving. But I don't know what he gives in the computer based test. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, actually, ma'am, uh, like from now uh, one of the students, I got to, uh, I heard that uh, like they were giving like uh, four or five statements, and then uh, it was like I think numerical type in which we had to fill that how many statements are correct in that I think. So I think that kind of questions are not uh, recently covered in assignments, and uh, like I. Including statements. Uh, I think it is it is maybe related to some MATLAB code or uh, on like that, ma'am. Or uh, ma'am, uh, uh, in that question, ma'am, four or five statements are given, uh, and like we have to identify that how many of them are uh, like correct, uh, and write in uh, write in uh, number. Okay. So. I have no idea. Basically, it was like it was numerical type, ma'am. So. Okay. I haven't seen those questions, and I don't think I'll be able to see those questions. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Just conceptual doubts. What do you have? We can do it. That's not an issue. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. That I'll cover. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.